Hey, everybody. My name is Lauren Dreyer, and welcome to Go With Your Gut podcast. If you have not already, please click the subscribe button so you always know when another episode comes out. Today, we are talking about fear. And when you feel fear, get motivated. So what happens when we feel fear? Well, we tend to back out of the things that we're trying to do. We tend to make every excuse in the book for why we don't want to do something, whether it be something small, something big, whatever it is. We find a way to distract ourselves from moving forward. So we find a way to essentially procrastinate and say, I don't want to do this yet, or this can be done tomorrow, or I need this other thing to happen first before I even start this, because your brain is sitting there saying, I don't want to do this. What can, what can I do to not make this other thing happen so that I don't have to get to it? And we end up coming with all these things that we need to do so that we don't need to move forward with what we really want to get done. So first of all, I wanted to break a little bit, I wanted to break down a little bit what fear really is. So it used to be when back in the hunting and gathering days, it used to be a way for our brains to literally keep us alive. You know, there we'd be, people would be going to get food and it, we'd say, I don't know if that berry is poisonous or if it's going to kill me or not. So I should probably not eat it. Or I need to run super fast because this bear, this animal is trying to kill me. Now, those are legit fears because those things could very well kill you. And running and doing that fight or flight save lives. However, now a lot of us fear is what we do when our brains are entering into unknown territory, when we do something out of our comfort zone or something, maybe we failed at previously because if we fail at it, then all of a sudden we're like, oh, I didn't, I didn't do good at this last time. Who knows if I'm going to do good at it again. So maybe I just don't do it this time. And then I won't have to experience that failure or I won't even have to think about it if it won't work again. So it's much different than what it used to be because now it's just a mental, a lot of it is just a mental thing anyway. I mean, if you're getting ready to go do some big crazy activity and get an adrenaline rush, yes, that may be a good fear. But if it's just doing something new, something big that is not going to potentially kill you, then yeah, it's, it's an irrational fear because it's something that you're making up in your head as to why you shouldn't take a big step, get out of your comfort zone and do something new for you. So how do you change the narrative? Well, first of all, you have to know what the narrative is. So I've had a lot of these thought scenarios uh, decently newish in my life. So I wanted to go over a couple of them and maybe you can relate to some of these. So one of them is fear always crept in when I felt somehow personally attacked by someone and I didn't have the confidence to challenge it. So if somebody was telling me that I probably couldn't do something or I wasn't going to be good at something or here's all the roadblocks I see. You better be careful because you don't know what's going to happen with this. Well, yeah, I don't. So whenever somebody would do that to me, I would internalize it so much that I froze. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. I probably can't do this. I'm not good enough to do this. And I wanted to, I was such a people pleaser that I thought, well, yeah, I don't, I don't want to disappoint these people or myself for that matter. So I'm, I'm not going to move forward. In fact, I wrote a whole chapter about it in the go with your gut book called recovering people pleaser, because it's pretty evident. It was pretty evident in my life that I did a lot of this stuff and it did hinder me from moving forward with anything else I wanted to do. Another one is 
fear crept in when I started wanting to do something that I didn't know would work. So that fear of the unknown. And guys, we go into this every single day. We're not sure what's going to happen today. We'd like to know and we try to plan it out, but do we have any idea? No. So every day is technically unknown. And for sure, going more into the future is unknown. We have no idea what is going to happen. So I used to think like that and say, okay, I have no idea what's going to happen. So I, I would kind of start doing whatever I wanted to do a little bit, but I wouldn't do it very good because I think I had it in the back of my head of, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this good. And maybe I'll move on to something and I'll get a distraction that will allow me to not finish it and give me that excuse to not have to finish it. So that unknown is such a huge thing for a lot of people because we don't want to, we don't want to think about the fact that we could fail or it doesn't go perfectly or exactly how we're thinking it's going to. And that unknown is really scary because I mean, let's face it, we all want that certainty. We all want the guarantee that it's going to work. And that's not a thing. There's no guarantee that something is going to work. Another one is that fear always came in when I wanted to go learn a new big thing. Like it was prominent when I was going to write a book when I decided that I wanted to do a blog and then I had to start a website to do that blog and um, even starting a podcast, I had no idea how to do any of this, but I started. I had no idea how to write a book, but I knew that I wanted to. So I started researching and slowly but surely I said, okay, I can do this. You can learn a lot of different things, but every time I wanted to start doing something new, something big, something that I had never done before, I generally knew nothing about except for, okay, writing a book. Yes, I have to type a lot of things. I probably need to come up with an outline, those general things, but anything else, I had no idea. Publishing a website, my brain didn't used to function like that. So It took a lot for me to say, okay, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing, but I want this. I want to make it work. And this is a big step in making it work for me. So I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to try it. A big one that I think a lot of people struggle with that I absolutely did was changing careers because that's such a huge thing. We go to school for how many years? And we get a degree, we, we do all these things to get the degree. We spend a lot of money to do that as well. And then all of a sudden we get to a point where we think, okay, maybe the industry has changed. Maybe, I mean, you've changed. That's what happened to me. Something changes and you say, I want to go to a different industry. I have this new thing that I like to do and I want to go do that as a job or maybe a side hustle, whatever it is. But you think, okay, how do I start? What is this even called? How would I even do this? I don't, my resume doesn't look like I can do any of these things. Do I even have the experience or the credentials or any of that stuff? Well, those are good things to contemplate and good things to figure out for sure. But there is something in your head that is making you think all those things. So you have to change the narrative a little bit for all of those to actually allow yourself to say, okay, yes, I can do it. Now, the last one, get my notes here. The last one is a little bit more personal and it hits some people people's emotions a little bit stronger. It did for me anyway, is fear came when I was worried what all of my good friends and family 
sorry, my eye won't stay open, what my good friends and family would think, what would they say? And that was, like I said, a big one for me because I was really concerned about that. You can probably tell because this has come up in a couple of different podcasts already. So I was really concerned about all of those things because I wanted that support. I wanted them to be, heck, I wanted them to be as excited about what I was doing as I am. And well, that's pretty hard because I mean, it's me doing this and not them. But anyway, I wanted them to be excited and say, yeah, that's exciting. Like, go Lauren, yay, as cheesy as that is. But I had to kind of think about the fact that this isn't what they wanted to do. It's what I wanted to do. And I had this voice in the back of my head saying, well, they don't, you know, maybe they don't think like that, or they don't, they don't, I, I wanted to say they don't think you'll do great. And that is absolutely not true, but it was me in the back of my head trying to convince myself not to do it and be that people pleaser because maybe my head was trying to convince me that I shouldn't do this or I shouldn't do any of this because it, yeah, it could affect them. People will come to my friends and family and ask about what the heck I'm doing or why I'm doing anything. So I was so worried about that when in all reality, okay, well, they might, but I can handle it. That's fine. So in order for me to move forward through all of these things, like I said, I had to shift my mindset, change the narrative and well, reframe how I thought about all these things. So what I did was I said, okay, I am feeling fear and I'm feeling super nervous about how my friends and family will react. Will they really react bad? Or maybe they'll be super proud that they know this is what I like to do. They know that this is important to me and they'll be absolutely excited and say, you know, good for you. Good for you for moving forward and doing what you want to do instead of, well, not instead of saying, yeah, I can't do this. They'll be excited for me and they may not say it how I want them to say it, but maybe they won't say anything at all. That'll be just as good. When I was feeling attacked by people and not, hopefully not physically attacked, it wasn't for me, but when people would come and tell me in some way or form, not necessarily bad form, come and tell me, I don't, I don't like what you're doing. I don't want you to do this. Why are you doing this? All of that stuff. When I, and I internalized that as an attack and them saying, no, this isn't good. When in all reality, they didn't say that at all. So I had to pause and think, are they really saying what I think they're saying, or are they just maybe asking questions? Or if they say, yeah, I don't think, like if you're not doing good enough, okay, well, let's pause it that second and think, think through it a little bit and break it down. So I had to say, is this person in this industry? Can they do what I'm trying to do better than I can? Do they have any idea what it takes to do what I'm doing? If they don't, then I say, okay, thank you. And I move on because if they don't, if somebody tells you that and they have absolutely no idea the work it takes, the inner strength that it takes, or the mindset that it takes to actually move through that and say thanks but no thanks then you don't need to listen to that you can let it go in one ear and out the other if if it's somebody who you would trade places with and who has done exactly what you do then i might take that into consideration but most of the time that's not going to be somebody 
telling you that you can't do it. That's going to be somebody encouraging you and saying, hey, you're doing great. Keep on going. It's hard. Keep on going. But I had to learn to not internalize that so much and say, okay, thank you for, thank you for your words. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to get some feedback from people who have done and are better at what I do than at what I'm doing than what I am. So we're going to just keep moving past that. And I had to learn that I was making myself feel attacked because I wasn't confident enough to say, thanks. Thanks for the advice. The other one that I went through was the fear of the unknown. And this is kind of one that you have to say, it is what it is. So the unknown, is there a guarantee of anything? Well, no, no, there's not. Will things happen? Will things go wrong? Yes. Yes, they will. Things will go wrong. Things will go absolutely different than you expected. And you have to be okay with that happening. And you have to learn to roll with the punches. You have to learn to pivot. You have to learn to let things roll off your back. You have to learn to expect, honestly, that things will not go as you want them to and decide where you need to prioritize things. It will always be the unknown. You can plan, plan, plan as much as you want. You can do all of the education and the prep work that you want. In all reality, when you actually put into action, things won't go how you expect them to go. Things won't go anywhere near what you expect them to go. Sometimes they might, but they probably won't. And at first I was super frustrated with that because I said, this is what I'm trying to do. Why is it not going how I want it to? And that's just not how it works. And so I've learned to say, okay, well, that didn't go quite how I wanted it to, but it's going where it's going to go. So what, how can I move with it? How can I pivot to make it work how it is? How can I heck learn from it? So I just learned to go with the flow, figure it out. And then last but not least, when I switched careers, first of all, I asked myself if I had any business being in the new industry, considering what I had done to build my skills up, what I had done to actually get there. And then I asked myself, can I do it? And the answer to this will always, for me, be yes, I can do it. Why is it always yes? Because as I have started all of these new things, as I have gain these new skills, no matter what you're doing, I didn't used to trust myself that I could figure it out. I used to lean on a lot of different people to figure it out for me. And then I'd say, okay, great. Thanks for that. Now I know how to do it. But doing all these new things, starting a book and learning how to get it published, starting a website and learning how to, well, make it not look horrible, and starting a podcast and figuring out how to get it connected, get it on air, get it edited, I guess, a little bit, or get it how I wanted it. All of those things took practice. There were some really frustrating days and it took up a lot of my energy, but I figured it out. And through all of that, it allowed me to say, okay, Lauren, you've got the scientific hard evidence that you have figured these things out. So now you can trust yourself that you'll figure everything else out. So I learned to trust myself that I would figure it out. So now I know whenever I do something, it may take me longer than expected. It may not look how it's going to look, how I wanted it to look in the end. However, I will figure it out and I'll figure out how to do it and be okay with where it ends up. All of this ends up, and when you feel fear, 
know that it is your brain trying to stop you. Use that adrenaline that fear brings and say, huh, you think you can stop me? Watch me. Watch me figure this out. Watch me do this because that will help you prove to yourself that you can do it. Change that adrenaline that comes with fear to motivation and say, oh, you don't think I can do it? Well, let me go ahead and prove to you that I can do whatever I want to do. Learn to trust yourself to figure it out. How? By taking that dang action. Taking the action, doing the hard thing, and whenever fear comes in, you say, oh, good try. I see where you tried to come in this time and I see where you tried to stop me. Guess what? It's not going to work. Doing the thing, doing the hard thing. The more action you take, the more evidence you can give yourself that you can do it, the more you will be able to shift that mindset and say, you're right, I can do this. I'm going to figure it out. It doesn't matter what somebody else says because I know I can do it and I want to. So I'm going to figure it out. Use that adrenaline that comes with the fear wherever that fear decides to sneak in because it's sneaky. Use it and say, hmm, I'm going to use that for the motivation to figure it out and do it because that's the only way I am going to move forward. So as always, go with your gut and then keep going. Until next time.